Hi, this is Brother Richard, and today we're continuing with our lesson series, Prototokus Mystery. This will be part 314 in the series, and our title today is Events After the Gathering. Events that will take place after the gathering. Now I want to preface this with two scriptures. Turn to Revelation, the first chapter, verse 8. What we are doing, we are entering into what I call a new reality. A, new reality. a reality that the human race has never experienced. And the things that are going to be encountered in this reality basically deal with things that exist outside of three-dimensional reality. Now, in Revelation, first chapter, verse 8, you see how God presents Himself. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is, which was, which is to come, the Almighty. God describes Himself as being a reality existing in a state which transcends past, present, and future. Past, present, and future are all contained within the reality of God, are not separated from His perspective are all continuous. He spans past, present, and future. I need to have us understand this if we're going to comprehend the things that we're going to look at in this lesson. The Bible was never intended to be read as a book because a book is read from beginning to end on a linear scale. God does not operate that way. He operates from a pluralistic scale that transcends beginning and ending. To him, the beginning and the ending are no different. They are all open to his design and his plan, his purpose. Having said that, I'm going to go into the principles here. Scripture indicates after the gathering, the Prototokos teachers will go on to instruct the creation in the knowledge of God. Matthew 24, verse 47. Verily I say unto you that he shall make him ruler over all, A-L-L, -L, all his goods. The word goods there literally is possessions. So the one that is rewarded, the Prototokos teacher, at this time comes into an inheritance which goes beyond linear existence goes into the province of Elohim's existence because he has to have access to all God's possessions. And God's possessions only constitute a small portion in linear existence. The majority of it transcends linear existence because God transcends linear existence. You have a comment? 
So he is literally saying there's nothing that's left out. Everything becomes ours. Yes. So now, is that the creation that is now existent, or is there anything beyond the creation that we're, is also our existence, our inheritance? Beyond. When he says all, it means all. That's why we can't limit ourselves to linear existence. Mm -hmm. If you're going to understand what your inheritance is, we have to broaden our perspective and see it from God's perspective. That's why we went to Revelation, the first chapter. Sure. I'm Alpha and Omega. I transcend past, present, and future. Yeah. Having said that... Just one quick second. Yes. We obviously, because we are in the Father's reality of truth, pursuing these things, are able to detect the difference in reality. That's very clear, as and as when it comes in, obviously. Yes. Those who stay in this in the uh, Luciferian reality because they are not pursuing these things, will they know that they are in a new reality? Or will it just be whatever happens? They'll be in a new reality they can't deal with. But will they know a new reality has appeared? Certainly, yes. The conditions, it's undeniable. Well, the reason I'm saying this is because you can say that in this period of grace there have been a number of different conditions, depending where you are in the world, which didn't look normal only last month. That's the point that I'm trying to make. So from that perspective, they're just going to think that it's a change of management and they've got to pay attention to whoever the new manager is. No, no because of the overwhelming conditions that they have to deal with. But they're going to see those conditions as coming about as a result of the Luciferians. They've heard, they've heard the Lord speak at the beginning of sorrows. They, they, of course they're going to hear that it's him. But because they aren't able to focus on anything more than there's a 50-foot Luciferian standing right next to me, right. in their minds, that's all there is to it, isn't yes. it? Well, it's the Luciferians that's changing reality also. That's the point. Okay. So they're not going to be able to get away from right. the thing that exists now will never again exist. exist again. When we read in Daniel, the seventh chapter, the fourth empire is altered, diverse, from any kingdom that's ever existed before. It's a new reality. Now, <clears throat> the prototokers are going to ex experience reality in truth. Mm -hmm. That's the point. They're going to experience pseudo-reality in the subjective right. state. Right. Now, having said that, Scripture teaches Prototokus teachers, once you're into their heritage, will be elevated to having access to past, present, and future realities in which they will instruct the residences of these realities, the mysteries of God. And they're going to do it through the book of Revelation. When you read Revelation, the 8th chapter, I'm Alpha and Omega, the end and the beginning, the, uh, the one it was, is, and is to come, <clears throat> past is just as accessible to God as present and future. To a human, past is gone. That's it. You don't have any sure. connection anymore. Future hasn't got here. You don't know what you're dealing with. To God... The present and the past and the future are all accessibly the same. So based on what you've said, it may be that one of us might be the one instructing Daniel, for example. This is where we're getting ready to go. Amen. Okay. Very appreciative of you. Daniel, the eighth chapter, verse 13 to 16. Daniel has a vision. 
Then I heard one saint speaking, and another saint said to that certain saint, which spake, How long shall be the vision concerning the daily sacrifice and the transgression of desolation to get both the sanctuary and the host to be trodden underfoot? And he said unto me, Unto two thousand and three hundred days, then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. It came to pass when I, even I, Daniel, had seen the vision and sought for the meaning, then behold, there stood before me as the appearance of a man. And I heard a man's voice. Now, we've done this before. The word man in verse 15 is ish. The word man in verse 16 is Adam. I heard an Adam's voice between the banks of Ulai, which called and said, Gabriel, make this man to understand the vision. Now, if you look at this passage of Scripture, from a human perspective, you're going to enter into a conundrum in which there is no answer. Why? Daniel says, I heard a man's voice, an Adam's voice. The voice was on the, between the banks of Ulai. But the voice comes from heaven. Right away. There is no Adam in heaven. There will not be an Adam in heaven for a couple of thousand years. Yet and still, you have an Adam speaking to Gabriel, the archangel, to go give Daniel a revelation. What does that mean? That means when the Prototokos teacher enters into his heritage, he is going to be able to say with the Lord in Revelation 1 8, I am Alpha and Omega. I transcend past, present, and future. You have to, to be able to access all the Lord's goods. Remember, go to Ephesians, first chapter. Verse 10 and 11. And in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might, the Father might, gather together in one all things, what? In Christ. What is Christ? All things. A reality. Okay. The reality that generates all other realities. So you're going to gather together in one all things in Christ, both of which are in heaven and which are on earth in him. If you are in Christ, you inherit all things. So what therefore, is Christ? Alpha and Omega. Okay. So you've answered the prayer. I was going to say, so therefore the past, present, and future are all things in Christ. Okay. Notice what he says, verse 11. In whom also we have obtained an inheritance. This is your inheritance. Just a minute. Just a minute, sir. In whom also we have obtained an inheritance being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. Your inheritance is all things. Your inheritance is past, present, future. Your inheritance is in Christ. The ability to say that you are Alpha and Omega. Yes, sir. Yeah. Sir. Okay, there's a lot of words that can be used at God's discretion to say whatever he's going to say. Well, he says here, in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might. Not he will, or he is. He said he might gather together 
in one, all things. Why is he saying well, might? Might cannot be taken as a conditional word here. Because you're looking at the Father's will. Mm. When the Father expresses his will, there is no condition of it might or it might not. The word might there means that it will take place when the Father does this. If we remember, this is uh, written 16 and 11. This is not modern English. This is how they phrased the intention to do something. Yes. I might do such and such. That's exactly what See, I know he's going to do it. Mm. You know he's going to do it. Mm. Why is he using the word might now? It, it throws because me Because at off. the time it's written, that's what it meant. <laughs> okay. He will do it. All right. Yes. Yes. Whenever the Father mentions his will, <clears throat> yeah. We were just talking about it before. In heaven, His will is done. Yes. He will have it. <coughs> Whatever He again. purposes, it's going to happen. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Brother Jones. <coughs> well, let's go on. We're looking at a principle here. And this principle deals with progression from a reality of linear proportions to a reality of multiplicity multiplicity where the Lord has his presence it's like his hand is here past present future are all accessible to him we just saw an example of that well the prototokos teachers are going to inherit all things now we want to focus on that also Turn to <clears throat> skip a couple of things here. Revelation twenty one, verse seven. He that overcometh shall inherit all things. And I will be his God, and he shall be my son. That's unconditional. Yeah. The Father says all things, the Son says all things, and it's all things. If you're saying all things, it transcends then your existence. Then your existence is the basement of this thing. All things is the totality of the building in which everything is is housed. <clears throat> so we should definitely understand that you've just explained the reason why we, excuse me, you've just explained the reason why the heavenly counterparts are at this time in their Quranics. Because yes. if they were any lower, they would have a beginning and end, wouldn't they? Yes. Right. Yes. Mm. Plus, they don't have authority. Well, at this point, I was really thinking about how things would look at the adoption. Yeah, yeah. It's still be the same, wouldn't it? That, that's, that's the whole aspect of the adoption. Yeah. Yeah. In the scripture, Jesus speaking says, they say, well, we want to see the Father. He says, well, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Mm -hmm. Now, we're going to be saying those same things. Mm -hmm. Okay, but he's still our God. Yes. But he is also, we are his representation. We are him. Absolutely correct. Yes. He's even... Jesus, God. I like that. We've got to tell it's you. two things. He's our God. He's our Father. He's Jesus, God. He's Jesus, God. He wanted the Lord wanted us to know that. It's the first thing He told Mary when He resurrected. Go to my God, my Father. Mm. I like the respect and the veneration. That's uh, something yeah. sorely missing. Uh, yes. Sorely yes. Missing. Yes. Now we want to take a look a little further. <clears throat> Scripture indicates, although the prototype's teachers are not yet glorified, they will enter into a state of omniscience, all-knowingness, to perform their position as instructors of the creation, past, present, and future. 
Hebrews, first chapter, verse 1 and 2. We're going to take a look at expanding beyond the creation, but not into Eperanios. Mm You know, when you take a look at God and the things that He says in His Word, <clears throat> He doesn't spend any time in linear existence fooling around with the things of earth. I, <laughs> he, he looks at this, and you read Psalms, the second chapter, He laughs at the best that the enemy can do to try to stop Him. His, his, his whole focus is not on earth. His whole focus is not this organized religious view of uh, salvation and uh, prosperity. His view is a vastly expansive, uh, transcending time, space, uh, comprehension of all things because he wants to take us into new realities that he has waiting for us. Now, Hebrews, the first chapter, verse 1 and 2. <coughs> God, who at sundry times and in diverse manners, spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. Now, the word worlds comes from a Greek term, aeon. Aeon. It means age. It's not talking about planets. It's talking about ages of existence. Turn to Hebrews 11, verse 3. So, as we're saying, since you said beyond the creation, but not in Ephraimos. Yes. What are we understanding in terms of the highest level you can be before Ephraim, that the, the heaven of heavens? <coughs> oh, you're going to go beyond the heaven of heavens. This is what we're looking at here. Remember, it transcend past, present, and future. These ages are in the future. They've yet to appear okay. in the present. But you have access to them because you are now a reality of 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 um, El Elohim right. within the fullness of Elohim. Yes. Is the heaven of heavens a multiplicity? Yes. 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 Let's go Hebrews eleven, verse three. People don't realize <coughs> when they don't take advantage of what the Lord is offering them in their covenant relationship, what they're throwing away. Sure. We're just gonna we're just covering a little bit of this tonight. Hebrews eleven three. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed. It's the same word, aeon. Yeah. So he's saying, through faith we understand that the ages were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. What is he saying here? He's saying that the ages were spoken into existence, but they are of a higher plateau, and they affect this reality. The things that you see are not are ordained, are affected by the things you don't see. Yes? These ages that we're reading about right here are outside of our creation? Yes. Yes. 
Remember, this creation is framed by the present. We're talking about past, present, and future, which the saints, the prototokas teachers are going to have access to. So they're going to have access to the ages, which exist. They exist in another reality, the future. So, Mr. Jones, how would you say, has he stopped creating? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yes. Well, were we ever going to get to the end of it? <laughs> no. <laughs> <coughs> so, are you saying he has stopped or he has not stopped? He stopped. Right. Read that. Genesis, the first, second chapter. He ceased creating. Well, Best hang on a second. He ceased creating all that he could possibly could create. Or he sees creating what he's telling us that he's he sees creating what the, he's telling us the that, plan called right, for him. Right. That, that he has never going to initiate creation like this again. Like this, that's the key, <coughs> the key point. Because and it, the Bible that, emphasizes that it said the perpetual Sabbath from this type of creating. Right. Okay. <coughs> Let's go on. <coughs> <coughs> The ages were formed by the word of God, so they're spoken into existence. They're spoken into the reality of the future. The ages to come were spoken into existence and become, and become, the <coughs> events of eternity. Of eternity. Okay. That's my fault. It's okay. Just scrubbing it. Now I understand what you mean. Okay. Yes. The, let me write it in. You should let everyone know to write that at the top of page two. Page two, there should be a word there events of eternity. Okay. What does that mean? We're going to take a look here. Scripture teaches the prototokis teachers inherit the ages to come as part of their calling. Matthew 24, 47, he shall make him ruler over all his goods. The ages to come are part of his goods, right. part of his possessions. When the Father says all, he means all. Nothing left out. We were talking about the ages which were to be experienced in eternity after the Great White Sea and everything's been settled. Mm -hmm. Are these some of those ages we're referring these are to? All of those ages. Even though they are below Epiranios but above the creation. Yes. That's interesting. Yes. Why would they be below Epiranios? Because they had a beginning. Nothing can exist in Epiranios that has a beginning. So we have to be merged with the heavenly counterparts in Epiranios to partake of them. No. You partake of them when you get your inheritance at the gathering. So we continue partaking of them. Sure. Even though we're higher than where we were sure. at the gathering. Anything, remember he said all his goods. Okay. Are the edge the spoken into existence? Yes. It's part of his goods? Okay. Yes. Do you have rulership over it? Yes. Right. So in other words, everything, everything is, is prepared, ready for that point, even though it begins at the gathering. And the creatures that are in them. So. Okay, sorry I'm going to ask this. But, so there's nothing that the Father does that we can't do, right? That's right. Okay, so, but we will not be creating new realities. Yes, you will. <laughs> mm. Okay. Yes, you will. We're going inside, to cover that. inside his realms. We're going to cover that. Okay. Bear with me. All right. We'll sit on our hands for a bit. <laughs> <laughs> now. <clears throat> Did you say Matthew 24? No. Okay. Well, we read it. Okay. So Matthew 24 talks about being given inheritance over all his goods. Yes. Revelation 21, 7 all things. So it's giving us the total picture, everything that the Father has brought into being becomes your inheritance in Christ. 
Now, Scripture teaches in the ages to come, the Father will continually instruct the sons in taking the perfected thing into higher states of perfection. Mm. Yes. Will we be creating secondary creations? No. Only eternal. Uh, yes. That's it. But you're referring to taking to higher states of perfection. That which is already perfect will be taken to a higher level of perfection. Remember what, what the what the first thing that the, the, the Elohim tells Adam. Take what I've given you right. and make it better. better. Yes, okay. So this, this is the cultivation and the nurturing that you, you've been referring to all this time. Okay. Yes. Turn to 1 Corinthians 15th chapter, verse 28. things shall be subjected, subdued unto him, then shall the Son also himself be subject unto him that put all things under him, that God may be all in all. The Father takes center stage at that point, because at that point, everything has been given into the hands of the sons to develop, and the father steps in to take it to the next level. Take a look at Gospel of John, fifth chapter, verse 19 to 20. Then answered Jesus and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, The Son can do nothing of himself, but what he seeth the Father do. For what things soever he doeth, these also doeth the Son likewise. So the Father loveth the Son, and showeth him all things that he himself doeth, and he will show him greater works than these that ye may marvel. Okay. The sons are going to do the same thing in eternity. So we should understand that in the past verse, 1 Corinthians 15, 28, the sons are tasked with taking the creation as the Father has created it to the maximum perfection it can be. And at that point, he starts something new. You said he takes it to the next level. Yes. He starts something new, yes. he increases something else, yes. or whatever word you're going to use. Yes. But it all begins again. Yes. And that's really where the life in eternity of the sons begins. Yes. 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 Now, what's being said here the word omniscience means all knowing. We enter in a state of all knowingness when we receive our inheritance, it's completed at the adoption. At the adoption, Paul said, I will know as I am known. You enter into the full state of omniscience. You get that point, operate in Eperanios. Those things that the Father has ready for the sons to receive. What does that mean? That means that 
omniscience, receiving all knowingness of the things that the Father has made manifest, you will know about, because the Father will show them to us. When he takes it to the next level, your omniscience goes to the next level because the Father is bringing things into being that didn't exist before, so you could not know them before. So the implication is that we will know more things all-knowing than we knew before exactly. all-knowing. <laughs> that sounds crazy, I'm sorry. but <laughs> Good crazy, don't get me wrong. That's fantastic. Yes. Absolutely fantastic. The Father is infinite. There's no in you can't put a defining point on the Father and say this is where it stops. Mm. Or this is where it breaks off. Mm. No. It consistently expands exponentially. You know everything that the Father knows. And then the Father goes on to the next level that you don't know. He's going to show you. Mm. Turn your feet. What were you going to say? <laughs> I'll reserve comment for right now. Ephesians, second chapter. Verse 7. That in the ages to come, he might show us the exceeding riches of his grace. What is grace? Unmerited favor. In his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. Everything is in Christ. He's going to eternally shower us with his loving revelation experiences. Yes. Okay. Jesus says, I always do those things that please the Father. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So now, that's interesting because he, he and the Father are one. Yes. So he is putting himself in a lower position to please a higher being than himself. Yes. Just for conversation's sake, Mr. Jones, did Paul have a love affair with Jesus to do similarly please Jesus or you know or is that stuck in the uh, human realm no no that's divine love oh <laughs> German in Ephesians I'm laying it all down for my Lord and the Savior okay so what I'm thinking here brother Jones is that okay so there's a bunch of us that are going to be sons we're going to be committed sons we're going to be Jesus's brothers mm -hmm. yes okay so now each one of us has a has a a group of tools that we measure to diagnose and and understand whatever it is that we're in and we compile a word gathering word salad together to describe what it is that we're going through but mine is going to be different than yours and yours is going to be different from him so we have these variances we're we're describing the same thing but there's a variance and what that means is there's a, it's a bigger picture than a single, a single dimensional observation. Yes. By having mm -hmm. the same ideas, but spoke out differently. So the Father is going to continuously let us yes. do what we do. And, yes. and it's an interesting thing is that it's all beneficial to each other. It's not to outdo each other. It's to benefit each other, to grow farther and grow more conversive and more understanding. Mm -hmm. so and the Father's going to get exponential pleasure out of all of it. So what we have here, the, cre the creation. Uh, we're talking about not this, the secondary creation because it's going out of the show. We're talking about <clears throat> the primary creation is just, it is a um, What I say, just the first of—it's the bottom rung, if you will—of the progression that the Father has planned 
the ages in the future are going to incorpor be incorporated by the prototokis, connected by the prototokis in the millennial period, but nobody will be able to experience them but the prototokis. Mm -hmm. When the millennium is over, <coughs> secondary creation is done, the primary creation, the new heavens and new, new earth are completed, then this is when this begins. This being the experience this, of the ages. Yes, the right. prototokis step into fullness right. of what the Father has planned for them. Until he expands and says, here's some things that you don't know. Yes, <laughs> yes. In addition, you will be doing your duties in the creation. I know. Mm. Because you have responsibilities over the creation. Yes. Are there levels in Ipiranios? No. Mm. The Ipiranios is undefined from a human perspective, so you can't define anything in the creation with uh, the Ipiranios. Ipiranios is a state that exists outside past, present, and future, outside of time, space, outside of dimensional, spiritual reality. It is the essence and the quintessence of God, which means it has no beginning, it has no end. It cannot be known. Only those <coughs> who are realities <coughs> can exist there, who have no beginning in no end. Only those who are realities. Yep. Okay. Because if you're not a reality, you're a created being. If you're sure. a created being, you have a beginning and an right. end. Right. But if you're a reality, you are a reality creator, aren't you? Right. To a degree. Because YHVH is a reality, but he can't okay. create. That's very interesting. He's a created it. being. So if you, you have to be a reality with no beginning and no end to operate in Epiranios. But he is only around to because these titles and offices were conferred on him. He's a reality because he's created after the pattern of Elohim. After Elohim. Okay. But he's a created being, therefore he can't exist beyond the creation. Is the implication that no other being excepting YHVH is a reality in the, in the manner that you're talking about? As far as I can see. Okay. Even though we know that all angelic beings who were the host of them, Psalm 33, 6, are able to manufacture realities. Of course I'm talking about pseudo, but the ones who did not fall are still able to manufacture to some degree a reality, aren't they? Yes, but they can't manufacture a reality that has no beginning and no end. But you're talking about creating. That's I'm true. talking about, right. I'm talking about manufacturing, which is taking something that existed the from the... They're using the word made. Can they make? Okay, exactly. Yes, exactly. they do. Right. But that is that limited to just the YHVH level, the Dawnstar level? Or are you allowing the word make or made to be used for every level of unfallen or fallen angelic being? Every level. Okay. To Even one degree man, or another. Man can make buildings, cars, okay. things like that. But you wouldn't call that a reality, though, would you? No, but you'd call it as an existence. Right. You'd call it uh, within a reality, right. a state in which things happen. Mm. But true creation is only reserved for Halloween. Sure. 